Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be discussing the process of meiosis. Before we begin, please make sure that you are familiar with DNA replication. If you're not, I have made a video which discusses this in detail that you can watch prior to watching this one. Meiosis is not to be confused with mitosis. Mitosis, a concept which I've talked about in another video, is the division of the nucleus. Mitosis, along with cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm, both result in the formation of two identical daughter cells. However, meiosis will result in the formation of gametes. Gametes include both sperm and egg. In the next few slides, we'll discuss in detail how this process occurs, and if you stay tuned throughout the entire video, at the end we'll discuss the differences between mitosis and meiosis. In a human cell, there are 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. The two chromosomes in each pair are referred to as homologous chromosomes or homologs. Chromosomes in a homologous pair are the same length and shape and carry genes controlling the same inherited characteristics. One pair of these 23 pairs are referred to as sex chromosomes. Females would carry a homologous pair of X chromosomes, so it, a female would be XX, and males carry one X and one Y. The remaining 22 pairs are referred to as autosomes. Since meiosis results in the formation of gametes, as I mentioned before, the result of meiosis is going to be cells that contain 23 chromosomes. This is half the number of chromosomes that we see in a normal cell. This is referred to as haploid or N, where the 46 chromosomes, the total number that would be in a human cell, is referred to as 2N or diploid. So this process of meiosis is going to be different than what we see in mitosis. Meiosis is going to be divided into two different parts where we have meiosis 1 as well as meiosis 2. In order for meiosis 1 to occur, we need the duplication of chromosomes that happens during interphase, very much like we see right before mitosis. So this duplication of the chromosomes needs to happen before the cell can enter into meiosis one. And so at this point, as the cell is entering into meiosis one, all 46 chromosomes have duplicated. The first phase of meiosis one is prophase one. During prophase one, we will see similar things that we saw in prophase of mitosis, where we are going to have the formation of the spindle fibers and the centrioles moving to opposite poles of the cell. However, we are going to see that each chromosome is going to pair with its homolog and become closely associated in a process that is known as synapsis. This allows genetic recombination or crossing over to occur. Crossing over allows for the physical exchange of regions of the non-sister chromatids. So this is something that only happens in meiosis, where these um, homologous chromosomes, these non-sister chromatids, become very closely associated with one another, and they have the ability to exchange genetic information. So this allows for a lot of genetic variability um, and they are going to be able to actually exchange information. So I'm gonna show you how this is going to happen. And so these areas are going to become so closely associated with one another that they're gonna be able to swap genetic information. And so I'm gonna show you um, what this would look like as this happened. Um, 
So this is what it would look like here. And so what you can see is that because they became so closely associated in these areas where I've drawn them um, together, they're actually capable of swapping that genetic information with one another. And so it's going to look something like this. And so what you'll notice is that there's some of the blue on the red and some of the red on the blue where they swap that information. And so this is something that is unique to the prophase one of meiosis where they can swap this information. Now this is going to happen between all homologous pairs, can happen between all homologous pairs in these non-sister chromatids, but I'm just showing you these couple as an example of what's going to happen. And it can happen in various places where they can swap this information. So metaphase one is going to be the next phase of meiosis one. And in metaphase one, pairs of homologous chromosomes are going to line up at the metaphase plate. And this is going to happen with one chromosome um, facing each pole. So this is going to look something like this. So you can see I've kept with the same scheme from the last image that I drew. And they're going to line up like so, where we have um, a pair of homologous chromosomes here and another pair here. So this is how they're going to line up where there's one um, on top of the other as far as pairs of homologous chromosomes. And I drew it with the red on top and the blue on the bottom, but this could actually occur in either way, as long as these are homologous pairs. All right, so again, this allows um, for variation as well because either one could be on top or on the bottom um, in this orientation. So then we're going to move into anaphase one. In anaphase one, the pairs of homologous chromosomes are going to separate. Uh, the sister chromatids are actually going to remain attached to one another. So what we're going to see here is just a reminder is that here we have a sister and a sister within each chromosome, okay? And these are homologous chromosomes. So what we're going to see in anaphase 1 is that the homologous chromosomes are actually going to separate from one another, and we are going to leave the sister chromatids together for now. Okay, and so this is what it would look like in anaphase where those homologous chromosomes are separated from one another and each chromosome contains its sister um, chromatid. And then from anaphase 1, we are going to move into telophase 1. And in telophase 1, we are going to have the cell um, is going to eventually split where we have those um, homologous chromosomes separated into each one, which would look something like that. And then cytokinesis would occur, which is the division of the cytoplasm, and it would result in two cells, and they would look something like this. At this point, the cells now have 23 chromosomes, okay? Um, as they're still put together with their sister chromatids, they actually have 23 chromosomes and they are referred to as haploid cells or N. What you'll also notice is that the cells do not look identical to one another. There's a lot of variation because of crossing over and also how they can align up at the metaphase plate. So now we're going to go into meiosis 2 with these two non-identical cells that are haploid. And at this point, no chromosome replication is going to occur. So we did have chromosome replication right before meiosis 1, but going into meiosis 2, we do not have chromosome replication. So we go straight from meiosis 1 right into meiosis 2. So we're going to go into meiosis 2, starting with prophase 2. And prophase 2 is going to start um, or be occurring in both of these cells at the same time. We're going to start to have the breakdown of the nuclear envelope. 
the formation of the spindle fibers from the centrioles. They're gonna start coming down in here. And that's going to move us into metaphase two. And so what we're gonna have in metaphase two is that the sister chromatids that you see here are going to arrange themselves at the metaphase plate. And so this is what it's going to look like for metaphase two. Now what you'll notice is that this is a little bit different than what we saw with metaphase one. In metaphase one, we have the pairs of homologous chromosomes lining up at the metaphase plate. Here we have the sister chromatids that are lining up at the metaphase plate. Now, these can face in either direction as long as the sisters are facing opposite poles. They can arrange in either direction, so this allows for variability. So we had some variability in prophase one where we had crossing over. We also see uh, variability in metaphase one where the homologous chromosomes can line up in either direction, orientation, whichever one on top of one another. And then also in metaphase two, where the sister chromatids can also orient in either direction, as long as they are lined up at the metaphase plate where one is going to go to one pole and the other one will go to the opposite pole. And so this is going to bring us into anaphase two, where the sister chromatids are going to be separating as they're being pulled to opposite ends of the cell. And so this is going to look something like this if we follow the um, cells we had just made. It would look something like so. So they're going to be separated from one another and pulled to opposite ends. And so remember, this is going to be occurring in both cells at the same time. So a little bit different than what we've been seeing before, um, but they're gonna be occurring in um, both cells. So from anaphase two, we will then move into telophase two. So in telophase two, we're gonna have the reforming of the nucleus. Those sister chromatids are gonna have split. We see the formation of the cleavage furrow occurring here. And remember, this is going to happen in both those cells. So we're gonna have two of these that are occurring at the same time. And when these cells split, that's going to result in the formation of four different cells. And so you can see these four cells here, they all look very, very different from one another. And they are going to be um, having 23 chromosomes or be haploid, referred to as N. Okay, and there's four of them. Again, very, very different. And this is going to result in the formation of egg or sperm depending on whether you're talking about male or female. When the egg and the sperm come together, both being haploid cells, they're gonna form what is referred to as a zygote, which is going to be a diploid cell having the total number of chromosomes. So an egg would have 23, the sperm would have 23, they would come together and again make a diploid cell or have 46 chromosomes. So for those of you who want to see this whole process put together, um, this figure shows both meiosis one followed by meiosis two. Remember prior to meiosis one happening, there would be replication of the DNA or duplication of those chromosomes. And then you would go through meiosis one. Prior to meiosis two, there would be no duplication of the chromosomes. So you would go straight from meiosis one into meiosis two, and then eventually forming four haploid daughter cells. So they would have half the number of chromosomes. Let's go ahead and compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis. Now, both mitosis and meiosis have duplication of the chromosomes prior to entering into mitosis or prior to entering into meiosis one. 
This duplication of the chromosomes or DNA replication is going to occur in interphase of the cell cycle. So this will happen before mitosis. There will be duplication of the chromosomes before entering into mitosis. And then there will also be duplication of the chromosomes before entering into meiosis one. Both mitosis and meiosis also include phases of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. However, the end result is much different in both. In mitosis, we have a parent cell that will eventually divide into two daughter cells. The parent cell is a diploid cell, and it will produce two diploid daughter cells. The daughter cells will be identical to one another and identical to the parent cell that produced it. So if a skin cell duplicated, they would both be skin cells, okay? Exactly identical to one another. However, in meiosis, we start with a cell, and through the process of meiosis, we get four daughter cells, and these four daughter cells have half the number of chromosomes. So we start with a diploid cell, and through the process, we get four cells that all have half the number of chromosomes or are haploid cells. And they all look very different from one another because we have things such as crossing over that occurs. And um, in the first part of meiosis one, we have homologous chromosomes that are going to separate. And then in the second part of meiosis, um, in meiosis, where we have meiosis two, we are going to have sister chromatids that are going to separate. So as I mentioned before, there's a lot of areas where we can have variability. And so the four daughter cells that are made are going to look very different from one another and also be haploid cells. So meiosis will result in the formation of gametes. This is um, sex cells, so egg or sperm. And mitosis will result in the formation of whatever parent cell it started from. These are somatic cells, so they could be um, a skin cell, a stomach cell, okay? Various cells um, to duplicate those cells and create more of them. In meiosis, we can also see that the cells look very, very different from one another. And within this variability, we can see how brothers and sisters can look very similar to one another or very different, different hair color, eye color, etc. I hope that this video helped to explain the concept of meiosis to you, as well as describe the differences between meiosis and mitosis. If you enjoyed the content of this video, I ask that you please like the video, uh, please share it and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on a new video. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and write them in the comments. Thank you.